Two decades after the initial alien invasion in 1996, Earth enjoys a period of peace. Nations have set aside their disputes and established the Earth Space Defense, ESD, utilizing debris from fallen spacecraft. They've developed alien technology and implemented a warning system for extraterrestrial dangers. The ESD's headquarters is in Area 51, with additional bases on the Moon, Mars, and Saturn's moon Rhea. Unbeknownst to Earth's inhabitants, aliens continue to observe the planet, and former President Whitmore experiences recurring nightmares about this. His dreams depict an enigmatic circular figure with a line that he is compelled to draw. At the moon base, Jake and Charlie transport new components for the base's defense system, assembling a colossal weapon. During the process, a mysterious issue arises, causing the tugs to struggle to maintain the weapon's position. Commander Jiang instructs the duo to retreat, but Jake defies orders and uses his ship to push the weapon back up, risking the ship's destruction by activating the fusion drive. Jake successfully repositions the weapon. Upon returning to the base, Jiang chastises Jake for the error and grounds him indefinitely. In Area 51, General Adams is summoned for an urgent matter. The aliens captured 20 years prior, previously in a catatonic state, are now awake and trembling in their enclosures. Unable to contact the ESV director, Adams learns that David is in Africa with Floyd, a government liaison. They meet with warlord Umbutu and his rebels, whose base is encircled by alien remains. Though initially hostile, Catherine intercedes and vouches for David's presence. Catherine has been researching the psychic link between Umbutu and the aliens. She shows David the sole ship that landed on Earth 20 years ago, which the locals had battled against for a decade. Umbutu reveals the ship's lights activated spontaneously two days prior. They also uncover a massive hole in the ground, indicating that the aliens had been attempting to drill into Earth's core before the destruction of the mothership during the first conflict. The team enters the ship and discovers the computer is transmitting a signal, which David identifies as a distress call that has been answered. Back on the moon, Jake video chats with his girlfriend Patricia, who is Whitmore's daughter. She informs him that the International Legacy Squadron will soon visit the moon base, including their friend Dylan, with whom Jake had a previous altercation. Jake nearly caused Dylan's death during a flight test, so Patricia encourages Jake to be amicable and accept responsibility for the incident. Later, the squadron arrives, and everyone is eager to meet Dylan, steps in of the first war hero, Stephen. At lunch, Jake encounters Dylan and, instead of being friendly, taunts him, accusing Dylan of being in his way again. Dylan retaliates with a punch, drawing Jang's attention. Jake covers for Dylan, claiming he merely fell, before retreating to his room, where he concedes to Charlie that he went too far. The following day in Area 51's medical bay, Dr. Isaacs visits his spouse Okun, the research director who fell into a coma during the First War. To Isaac's astonishment, Okun awakens, only realizing 20 years have passed when he sees Isaac's changed appearance. Concurrently, Adams is informed that Rhea's base has been obliterated, prompting a red alert. In Africa, David learns about the emergency, but Catherine remains fixated on analyzing the circle drawings that appear everywhere. Umbutu brings them to his office, showing them the drawings he made based on the visions he had since the ship reactivated. The circle resembles a device, and Umbutu has deciphered some of the alien's language as well. On the moon, panic ensues when a vortex forms in the atmosphere. A wormhole materializes, releasing a spherical machine resembling Umbutu's vision. A transmission is sent to President Lanford and David, who deduces the sphere as a spacecraft. Lanford advocates for a preemptive strike, but David argues that it could be a different alien race with unique intentions. Despite his objections, the ESD Council votes to attack. Jung activates the base's massive weapon. Effortlessly downing the sphere, David urges them to recover it for study, and Lanford consents to dispatch a team of scientists, but insists David return to D.C. for political reasons, leaving him infuriated. Lanford publicly announces Earth's defense against a second attack. Watching on TV, Whitmore grows anxious, sensing these aren't the same aliens, and believes he should issue a warning. Patricia advises him to relax and trust the new president. Whitmore agrees to rest, but when Patricia checks on him later, he is nowhere to be found. Understanding David's frustration, Jake decides to help. Defying Jang's authority, he steals a shuttle and flies to Africa to pick up David, Floyd, Umbutu, and Catherine. Following a turbulent journey through the old mothership's debris field, they locate the sphere 
and Jake and David prepare to retrieve it. Meanwhile, on Earth, the U.S. celebrates the anniversary of the first war victory. Whitmore interrupts Lanford's speech to issue a warning, but suddenly experiences a painful headache and collapses. In the hospital room, Okun scribbles formulas on the walls when he suddenly experiences the same pain as Whitmore, followed closely by Umbutu. On the moon, observers are stunned by the arrival of a new alien mothership approaching dangerously close to the surface. Charlie hastily takes control of the shuttle, rescuing Jake and David just before they are crushed. As Adams cancels the Earth-based celebration, Jake assumes control of the shuttle, allowing Charlie to use the robotic arms to collect the sphere. Although it takes several attempts, they eventually succeed. However, they discover the mothership's gravitational pull is drawing the shell towards it. Jung deploys pilots and activates the colossal weapon, but the attack fails, forcing the pilots to retreat. The mothership retaliates, destroying the weapon, prompting Jang to order an evacuation just before the ship annihilates a significant portion of the moon, including the base. The ESD activates the orbital defense system, but the mothership destroys all satellites before they can fire. Shortly after, the mothership reaches Earth, dragging Jake's shell along with it. The ship's proximity triggers devastation in multiple cities, with its gravity uprooting people and buildings. David determines that the mothership is targeting the North Atlantic Ocean, forcing Jake to execute evasive maneuvers to dodge debris. Lanford orders the evacuation of all coastal cities, but some vessels fail to receive the message in time. Julius, David's father, is sailing when the ship arrives. He contacts David, mentioning the ship's immense size compared to the previous one. But the call is cut off when the mothership lands and Julius's boat is struck by another vessel. Elite pilots from the moon arrive to assist with defense efforts. But Dylan is too late to save his mother, who manages to help a woman and baby escape before perishing with the collapsing hospital building. Whitmore and Patricia meet with Adams in Area 51, where Okun escapes his room to join their meeting. The aliens in the cages become agitated, and Okun believes they're celebrating. As David and the others arrive, Whitmore covertly enters a sealed room and releases an alien to establish communication. The alien grabs Whitmore with its tentacle and speaks through him, declaring, she has arrived, she is all. Catherine presents the alien with the circle symbol, asking for its meaning, which enrages the alien. Soldiers intervene as the alien's violent outburst threatens Whitmore's life opening fire on the creature. While bullets prove ineffective, Umbutu arrives and employs his blades to attack the alien. After breaching its armored exterior, the true, smaller alien emerges, which Umbutu promptly kills. Meanwhile, on the coast, a group of siblings who recently lost their parents attempts to flee and seek shelter. Amidst the debris, they discover Julius' wrecked boat and the unconscious man inside. Confirming he is alive, they decide to take him with them. At Area 51, the team analyzes the mothership, helping David deduce that she is all refers to the aliens being part of a massive hive with the arrival of their colossal queen. A reconnaissance aircraft then transmits a live feed from beneath the ocean, revealing that the mothership is drilling into Earth's core. Extracting the molten core would eradicate all life on Earth. David recalls that they defeated the aliens during the first war by destroying the mothership, which housed a queen. He suggests that they don't need to destroy the more powerful ship but rather focus on killing the Queen. Lanford authorizes a mission to eliminate the Queen, and the pilots prepare for battle. Drones will lead, disabling the shields, while pilots provide cover for bombers carrying cold fusion warheads designed to penetrate the hull and kill the Queen. As the pilots approach the mothership, it activates its defenses. The jets attempt to maneuver around the ship and maintain a defensive position, but the ship is heavily guarded, making it impossible to reach its top. After losing two bombers, Jake suggests that infiltrating the ship is their only option. Dylan concurs, despite the danger, and Adams authorizes their entry while ordering backup. Inside the mothership, the pilots are astonished to discover an entire ecosystem. Whitmore, now conscious, warns Patricia that the Queen knows they're coming. Patricia relays this information to Adams, but it's too late. The Queen emits a wave that disables all the jets. As the pilots plummet to their deaths, they release their bombs in a last-ditch effort to complete the mission. However, the explosion fails to harm the Queen, who is protected by an energy field. A second, larger wave emanates from the alien system, disabling all satellites, Area 51, and the President's bunker. The mothership seizes the opportunity to strike the bunker, killing everyone inside, including Lanford. Shortly after, 
Military leaders arrive at Area 51 and appoint Adams as the new U.S. president. Catherine shows Mbutu Okun's drawings, and he manages to translate some of them. References to an intergalactic war and stopping an enemy before it reaches Earth. Mbutu concludes that the sphere is an ally, as the aliens are also its enemies. Inside the mothership, Jake, Dylan, and a few other pilots survive the fall and must now hide within the ecosystem to avoid detection. At the base, Okun uses a special laser to open the capsule and scans the sphere, but fails to detect any signals. Floyd, driven by curiosity, touches the sphere, causing its smooth surface to absorb his hands. A few moments later, the sphere activates, releasing Floyd and beginning to communicate in English, which it learned from Floyd's mind. Simultaneously, the Queen receives a reading on her system and dons a massive piece of armor. The pilots can only watch as the top of the mothership detaches and initiates a new attack. The sphere explains that it intercepted the alien's distress call and attempted to warn humans, but was attacked without any questions. The sphere's species has previously fought the invading aliens, referring to the motherships as harvester ships that travel from planet to planet, extracting cores for fuel. The sphere is the sole survivor of its planet, possessing advanced technology. A hidden planet teaches refugees from fallen worlds to construct weapons capable of defeating the invaders, which is why the aliens fear the sphere. Unfortunately, now that the sphere is active, the queen can track it. David suggests that since the queen is already approaching, they could use the sphere as bait, as the queen did with them. Okun and David propose hiding the real sphere in an isolation chamber and replicating its radiation signal with a decoy inside a tug loaded with cold fusion bombs, luring the Queen into a trap. To track the Queen, Adams reveals he still has a radar truck from the First War. Adams and David discuss the plan with the remaining pilots, explaining that, since sick helots are down, someone must manually fly in and detonate the bombs, sacrificing themselves in the process. Patricia attempts to volunteer, but Whitmore intervenes and accepts the mission, disregarding his daughter's objections. Meanwhile, Julius regains consciousness and persuades the siblings to take him to Area 51. Running low on gas, they stop at a gas station and find a school bus filled with abandoned children. Julius takes charge, driving the bus and its occupants towards Area 51. Inside the mothership, the pilots discover the alien's hangar. Jake dashes ahead, distracting the aliens with insults and urinating on their floor while his friends steal the jets. The aliens respond aggressively, opening fire, but the pilots manage to take off and rescue Jake before he is hit. The aliens pursue them, closing the doors, forcing the pilots to execute evasive maneuvers to avoid death. Amid the chaos, Jake apologizes to Dylan for nearly killing him years earlier. After several narrow escapes, the pilots reach the doors and exit just before they close. As the base prepares for the attack, Patricia watches her father leave despite her protests and decides to fly alongside him for support. Concurrently, Julius and the children arrive on the bus, just as the Queen and her army approach. The base and the aliens exchange fire, commencing a new battle, while David guides the bus to his sector for protection. The sphere is placed in the isolation chamber, and the Queen is deceived into thinking Whitmore has the real signal. Patricia bids farewell to her father as he embarks on his sacrificial mission. David raises a shield around the alien army to contain the impending explosion, and Whitmore enters the Queen's ship to detonate the bombs. For a moment, the team believes they have triumphed, but the alien army continues to attack and the base's primary weapon is destroyed. When the smoke clears, the Queen is revealed to have survived by using her energy shield. David joins Julius and the children on the bus to escape as the Queen pursues them. Ground soldiers return to the base to defend the sphere from incoming aliens, while the pilots assault the queen, whose shield protects her. With only six minutes remaining, Patricia discovers the queen momentarily lowers her shield when attacking. Seizing this opportunity, Patricia targets the queen's weak spot, shattering the shield and leaving her exposed. The queen retaliates, striking Patricia's jet, but she manages to eject and parachute to safety before the crash. The queen attempts to capture Patricia but Dylan and the others return to attack her using her technology. Meanwhile, within the base, aliens locate the sphere, which is guarded by Okun and Isaacs, and relay the location to their queen. Dylan and his team lose control of their jets as the queen uses her hive link to create a new shield from her technology. Ambutu and Floyd hurry to the isolation room to battle the aliens, 
But Isaacs is struck during the confrontation. As Mbutu and Floyd defeat the aliens, Okun bids farewell to his husband. With only two minutes left, the queen reaches the base and begins assaulting the roof to access the sphere. Dylan refers to the jet shield as a tornado, inspiring Jake to activate manual thrusters and create a fire whirl, expelling them from the hive. As the queen finally penetrates the base and seizes the sphere, the pilots regain control of their jets and launch an attack, forcing her out of her armor. The queen tries to escape, nearly capturing the bus, but David reverses just in time as she collapses and dies, releasing the sphere. The queen's death instantly halts the drill and all alien ships, which crash to the ground. As the world celebrates victory and the departing mothership, Okun confirms the sphere's safety. David fears Earth may not survive another assault, but Okun reminds him of the sphere's training program on a hidden planet, suggesting humanity's next step is to join the intergalactic war. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to stay on top of all the latest recaps and never miss a beat. Thank you for watching.